I have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Sir Carmichael Clark? The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combeside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. The victim is called Sir Carmichael Clark, one of the best throat specialists in London. The body was still warm when we found it. If we had been warned earlier, we definitely could have saved him. It appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter. A mistake? Lucky for him. And what if he did it on purpose? No, no. He's defined his madcap rules and he's sticking to them. It's a matter of pride for him. Shall we go up to the house, Poro? You go, my friends. I will come soon. An ABC guide. The murderer's customary signature, covered in blood this time. Sir Carmichael's throat was cut. It's a clean incision, a professional murder. The gravel on the path has been sprayed with blood that covers a conical-shaped area, which starts at the body and becomes wider as it moves further from the bush. Apart from the wound to the throat, the body is untouched. No cuts, no bruises. Jap has emptied the victim's pockets and has laid out their contents on this piece of wax cloth. A signet ring, very probably with the Clark family's coat of arms. It is pointless. Nothing appears to be missing from this wallet. An oriental dragon. It's an old piece, much older than a pocket watch on which it was fastened. This place is very calming. The sight is exceptional. It is easy to imagine that Sir Carmichael used to enjoy stopping here every evening. The body is just in front of a bush, one of the only bushes in the surrounding area. The vegetation behind the bush has been trampled. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work.
Sir Carmichael had his back to the bush when the killer cut his throat from behind. A fatal blow that sprayed blood over a range of more than one meter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Have you finished, Poirot? Chief Inspector, many questions remain unanswered, but I am certain of one thing. The killer has prepared his crime very carefully. Quite right. He must have known Sir Carmichael's movements well to plan such an attack. The murderer struck with terrible savagery. Yes, blood flowed. It's the first time he's attacked a man. He armed himself accordingly. Have you spoken to the victim's family, Chief Inspector? I've spoken to the brother, Franklin Clark. I didn't get much out of him. He's yours. I must get the body removed. To be honest, this inspector seems rather obtuse. I'm counting on your friend Poirot to catch my brother's murderer. Ah, here he is now. Please, Mr. Poirot. Mr. Poirot, this is my brother's secretary, Miss Thora Gray. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Poirot. Would you like some tea? No, thank you, mademoiselle. I find it hard to digest. There is something elegant about her. She is focused on a cup. Let us take advantage of this to observe her more closely. She has good taste, except perhaps in her choice of jewellery. Please excuse me, I have to take care of Lady Clark. It is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to question him. My brother's wife is gravely ill. You will probably want to question her, but I fear that it won't be possible today. Of course, I understand. Someone set a trap for your brother. Who was familiar with his habits? Everybody knew he took his evening walk at half past eight, and that he always followed the same path. And... Uh... Did people of the village know Sir Carmichael's a bit? I don't know. It's possible. What were you doing last night? After dinner, I went to my bedroom. At 11 in the evening, the telephone rang. It was the police. I went to look for my brother. Was it a dark night? It was a new moon. I took a lantern. So it was you who found the body? Yes, along with the gardener. Have you seen any strangers around the house recently? No. As far as I know, nobody has been near the house. <gasps> Miss Clark! Oh, Lady Clark must have fallen from her chair. I have to help Miss Gray get her up. Hastings, while our host is gone, let's examine the drawing room. Poirot, a gentleman shouldn't... I take full responsibility. 
All you have to do is to leave the drawing room door ajar and let me know if anyone is coming. A tiger. It is an emperor. His place at the center of the table is probably symbolic. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Sir Carmichael showed himself to be very consistent in his collection's theme. A turtle. A dragon. A crane? Comside's private collection, purchases since 1920. The catalog for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. Traditional Chinese map. Facsimile. South is on the top of the map. There are some very valuable objects here. Compass, point to the thous. Bronze and magnetite, Han Dynasty, circa 210 BC, purchased in Hong Kong 1935. 